Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll discuss about waveguide gyrator with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. First of all, I'll discuss about basics of waveguide gyrator. After that, I'll explain internal structure and working of waveguide gyrator. After that, I'll derive scattering parameters of waveguide gyrator. And at last, I'll discuss about applications of waveguide gyrator. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of waveguide gyrator. See waveguide gyrator that is two port device. Here we have port one and here we have port two. Its working is based on phase shift. If you provide input at port one, then at output of port two, we will be having 180 degree phase shift by arrow one can understand this. As if you provide input at port 2, then at port 1, output is having 0 degree phase shift. So here, waveguide gyrator, that is two port device. And its working is based on phase shift. If you provide input at port 1, then at output of port 2, we will be having 180 degree phase shift. And if you provide input at port 2, then at output of port 1, we will be having zero degree phase shift. That is how working is there. But how exactly that working is coming? Let us try to understand that by its internal structure. If you observe the internal structure, here we have port one and here we have port two. See, working is as per, if you give input at port one, then at output of port two, there is 180 degree phase shift. And if you give input at port two, then here at port 1, output is having 0 degree phase shift. If you observe its internal structure, then here we have 90 degree twister. This 90 degree twister, that is rotating electric field by 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. And here if you observe, we have ferrite road. This ferrite road, that is rotating electric field by 90 degrees by this direction, you can observe. By this direction, it will be rotating electric field by 90 degrees. Now I'll explain you how exactly working is coming. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll give input at port one. So here when you give input at port one, signal will flow in this direction. Now here at port one, we are providing vertically oriented polarized signal. So electric field is vertically oriented, right? Now see this electric field which is vertically oriented that will come to 90 degree twister. Now this 90 degree twister will do what? It will rotate this electric field by 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. So we are propagating signal in this direction. So anti-clockwise is this. So here you can observe electric field that is having 90 degree angle in this direction after passing through this 90 degree twister. After that, we have ferrite road. This ferrite road that is again rotating electric field by 90 degrees in this direction. So right now, we have this signal. After passing through this ferrite road, again 90 degree in this rotation will happen. So this electric field that will be now in downward direction. And that downward direction electric field that will appear at port 2. So you can observe here we have vertically oriented electric field. here. We have vertically oriented electric field, but it is there in downward direction. What it means? Here we are having 180 degree phase shift, right? So that is how working is there. If you give input at port 1, at output of port 2, there is 180 degree phase shift with electric field, right? Now, I'll give input at port 2. So signal will propagate in this direction, right? So you can observe here, signal is propagating in this direction. See at port 2, again we will apply vertically oriented electric field. So here vertically oriented electric field is there that will come to ferrite road. Now this ferrite road that will be rotating this electric field in this direction by 90 degrees. Right. So you can observe this field now that is having orientation in this direction. It is rotating it by 90 degrees in this direction. So now electric field is there in this direction after passing through this ferrite road. Now we have 90 degree twister that will be rotating electric field by 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. 
so if you observe from this side then anti clockwise that is happening in this direction if you observe from this side then anti clockwise is there in this direction so this electric field now that is having rotation in this direction if you observe it from this side so now electric field will become vertical after passing through this 90 degree twister and it is vertically upward direction and this vertically upward direction field that will appear at port 1. So whatever input that we give over here that will be appearing at port 1 means there is 0 degree phase shift right. So working is how working is based on phase shift at port 1 if you give input then output at port 2 is having 180 degree phase shift. And if you give input at port 2, then at port 1, output is having 0 degree phase shift. That is how working is there. Now, based on this working, I will derive scattering parameters. See, in scattering parameters, first of all, one should know waveguide gyrator, that is two port device, right? So, here we have port 1, here we have port 2. So, scattering matrix, that is two cross two matrix. If you have two port, then scattering matrix is of 2 cross 2. If you have 3 ports, then scattering matrix will be of 3 cross 3. So, with 2 port waveguide generator, scattering matrix that is of 2 cross 2 matrix that is having parameters S11, S12, S21 and S22. First of all, one should know the meaning of this S11, S12, S21 and S22. The S11 that is return loss at port 1 means output at port 1 provided input at port 1 s22 that is return loss at port 2 means output at port 2 provided input at port 2 s12 is what s12 is input at port 2 output at port 1 the second suffix explains you input and first suffix that explains output s21 is what input at port 1 output at port 2 right now, based on its working, you need to understand how these parameters are there. If you have perfectly matched the ports, here we have two ports, port 1 and port 2. If port 1 and port 2 are perfectly matched, then S11 and S22 that is having zero return loss. If you have zero return loss, then S11 and S22, those are zero, right? Here, see we have gyrator in which if you have input at port 1, output at port 2 is having 180 degree phase shift. But if you have input at port 2, output at port 1 is having 0 degree phase shift. What it means? It means S12 is equals to minus S21. So we can place this in this S matrix where S11, S22 that is 0 and S12 that is equals to minus of S21 means instead of S21, I can write minus of S12. So here we have simplified S matrix. Now to solve this S matrix, I'll apply identity property. If you observe identity property, then that is S matrix into conjugate of S matrix that is equals to identity matrix. So here we have S matrix, right? That is this into conjugate of S matrix, right? And that is equals to identity matrix means diagonal is one. So here, if you multiply this, if you multiply first row and first row, then you will be having S12 square is equals to 1 means S12 is equals to 1. If you have S12 is equals to 1, then this S matrix is modified to 0, 1, minus 1, 0 as per this, right? So S matrix of gyrator that is 0, 1, minus 1, 0, right? That is how it is happening. I hope you have understood this. Now I'll discuss about applications. The applications of gyrator that is purely based on replacement of inductors. See with microwave circuits, our agenda is to have compact circuits. Your circuit should be compact. Usually with microwave circuits, sizes are more with inductors. So as if you can replace inductors by any other components, then you can reduce the size. So basically gyrator in microwave is used to replace inductors. The reason is inductors are bulky in terms of size, right? So in microwave circuits, 
in majority of cases our primary goal is to replace inductors by having gyrator to reduce the size of circuit right you will be observing that we use it in telephony devices we have used that in parametric equalizer we can also use this gyrator in bandpass filter see there are many usages one can say to replace inductor gyrator is the best device as it is giving you 180 degree phase shift right so basic agenda is to replace inductors so that is how waveguide gyrator that one can understand i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that i would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video